This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Welcome to our show. President Obama vowed an international crackdown to halt piracy off the coast of Somalia Monday, soon after the freeing of U.S. cargo ship Captain Richard Phillips, who had been held hostage by Somali pirates since last Wednesday. Three Somali pirates were killed in the U.S. operation. While some military analysts are considering attacks on pirate bases inside Somalia, in addition to expanding U.S. Navy gunships along the Somali coastline, others are strongly opposed to a land invasion. U.S. Congress member Donald Payne of New Jersey made a brief visit to the Somali capital of Mogadishu Monday and said piracy was, quote, a symptom of the decades of instability. His plane was targeted by mortar fire as he was leaving Somalia, soon after a pirate vowed revenge against the United States for killing his men. Former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, John Bolton, told Fox News over the weekend that the U.S. should assemble a, quote, coalition of the willing to invade Somalia. Meanwhile, local fishing and business communities along the Somali coast are suffering as a result of the increased American and international naval presence in their waters. American marine forces always arrest us as we continue fishing. We meet their warships and at times they send helicopters to take photos of us as they suspect we are pirates and we are not. People are worried about the troops as it is becoming more and more difficult to do business. There's a lot of warships patrolling the sea and merchant ships are getting more and more checked thinking they are operated by pirates. While the pirate story has dominated the corporate media, there's been little or no discussion of the root causes driving piracy. Mohamed Abshir Waldo is a consultant and analyst in Kenya. He is Kenyan of Somali origin. In January, he wrote a paper called The Two Piracies in Somalia, Why the World Ignores the Other. He joins us on the phone right now from Mombasa. Welcome to Democracy Now! Uh, hello. Thank you. Good to have you with us. Can you talk about um, what you think the two piracies are? Uh, well, the two piracies are uh, the original one, uh, which was uh, firing, uh, fishing piracy by foreign trawlers and vessels um, who at the same time uh, were dumping um, industrial waste, uh, toxic waste, and um, it also has been reported uh, nuclear waste. Um, most of the time we feel uh, it's the same um, fishing vessels, foreign fishing vessels, that are doing both. That was uh, the... Uh, piracy that started all this problem, and the other piracy is the um, uh, shipping piracy. Um, when um, the marine resources um, of Somalia uh, was pillaged, uh, when the waters were poisoned, when the fish was stolen, and in a poverty situation uh, in the whole country, um, the fishermen felt that they had no other uh, possibilities or other recourse but to fight um, with, um, you know, the, the, the properties and the shipping of the same countries that have been doing and carrying on the uh, fishing piracy and toxic dumping. Mm. Can you explain what IUUs are? IUUs uh, um, um, uh, I don't uh, remember now, but it's um, un uninterrupted and unreported um, uh, fishing, um, unlicensed, unreported, and controlled practically fishing in your um, article in your article you I, say in your article you say it stands for illegal unreported and unregulated 
fishing fleets from Correct. Europe and Arabia and the Far East. Correct. Correct. And this has been known uh, to the, both the countries uh, in the West that had uh, these um, fishing fleets, uh, which included Spain, Italy, Greece, and eventually UK, and others uh, who joined later, um, as well as Russian. And, of course, there were many more uh, from the East. Um, and, and this problem has been going on since 1991. And the fishing communities and fishermen reported and complained and appealed to the international community through the United Nations, through the European Union, uh, with no, uh, actually, um, response in any form at all. They were totally ignored. Mohammed Abshir Waldo, explain how what you call fishing piracy began. Uh, fishing piracy means uh, fishing without license fishing by force, even though the community complains, even though whatever authorities are there complain, even though they ask you these uh, foreign fishing uh, fleets and trawlers and vessels um, that have no license, that have no permit whatsoever, when they tell them to stop fishing, and get out of the area, they refused and instead, in fact, a fight. They fought with the fishermen and coastal communities, uh, pouring boiling water on them and uh, even shooting at them, uh, running over their canoes and fishing boats. Uh, these were the problems that had been going on for so long until the community uh, organized themselves and... Um, empowered actually what they call the National Volunteer Coast Guard, uh, what you would call and what others call today as um, pirates. Um, are you, so you're saying illegal fishing is happening off the coast of Somalia. What countries are engaged in it? Uh, the countries engaged uh, included practically all of southern Europe, France, uh, Spain, uh, Greece, uh, UK. Nowadays, I hear even uh, Norway. There were not many Scandinavians before, but Norwegian fishing now is uh, involved in this, um, you know, very uh, profitable uh, uh, fishing business. Um, so uh, there are others, of course. There are Russian. There are Taiwanese. There are Philippines. There are. Uh, Koreans, they are Chinese, uh, you know, it's uh, free for all uh, coast. And uh, to make things worse, we learn that now that the navies and the warships are there, every country is protecting their own illegal fishing viruses, uh, vessels. They have come back, uh, they ran away from the... Um, the Somali uh, volunteer guards, coast guards, but now they are back and they are being protected by their navies. And in fact, they are coming close to the territorial waters to harass again the fishermen who no longer have opportunity or possibility to fish uh, on the coast because of the uh, fear of being um, called uh, pirates and apprehended by the Navy, who are at the same time protecting the other side. So the issue is really um, uh, a matter of tremendous injustice. International community uh, only attending and talking and uh, coming to the rescue of, the, um, of their interest and not at all considering or looking from the Somali side. This does not mean I am condoning or anyone's condoning uh, piracy or uh, endangering the life of innocent sailors and crews or damaging the property of others. 
But uh, these people, these fishermen turned pirates, had no alternative but to protect themselves, to protect their turf, to, um, you know, an act of desperation, you might call it. Um, what do people in Somalia feel about the pirates, uh, the issue of pirates uh, uh, off the coast? Uh, mixed reaction, I think, in Somalia. Um, the people uh, do not want the innocent sailors to be harmed. They don't want um, any major um, environmental disasters to happen by blowing up uh, chemical or oil-carrying vessels, and they urge the pirates or fishermen pirates, they urge them not to do any such things. On the other hand, since there's no sympathy, there's no understanding, there's no um, uh, readiness for dialogue with the coastal community, with the community in general, with the Somali authorities, whether the regional government or the national government, on a joint action uh, for solving these problems, then it's uh, each for his own uh, way of doing. But the people are very concerned. Um, on the one hand, they would like this to be resolved peacefully. On the other, um, they feel very sad and um, for injustice being done by the international community. Mm. Um a little more on the issue of toxic dumping, if you would, Mohammed Abshir Waldo. I don't think people in the United States understand exactly what it is you're referring to and how it affects people. Well, toxic dumping, industrial waste dumping, nuclear dumping, um, as you are probably aware and have heard and many people know, uh, for quite some time um, in the 70s, mainly in the 80s, in the 90s, um, there was a lot of waste of all these kinds that um, companies wanted to get rid of, uh, following very strict environmental rules in their countries. So uh, where else to take that uh, in countries in conflict or weak countries who could not um, prevent them or who could be bought? So uh, these um, wastes have been carried to Somalia. Uh, it's been in the papers. It has been reported by um, media organizations like Jazeera, I think like CNN. Uh, many had reported about the mafia, um, Italian mafia, who admitted it, dumping it in Somalia for quite some time, uh, for, for quite a long time. And... Uh, as we speak now, I heard yesterday, in fact, another uh, vessel was captured in the Gulf of Eden by community, this time not pirates, by the community, uh, when they suspected it, and uh, it was carrying two huge containers, which it dumped into the sea when they saw these people uh, coming to them. They have been apprehended. The vessel had been apprehended. Um, the, fortunately, the containers did not sink into the sea, but uh, they had been towed to the coast. And um, this community have invited the international community to come and investigate this uh, matter. So far, we don't have um, action. So this uh, dumping, waste dumping, toxic dumping, waste, nuclear waste dumping has been ongoing in Somalia um, since 1992. When I read your article, Mohammed Abshir Waldo, it reminded me of a controversial memo that was leaked from the World Bank. This was when Lawrence Summers, now the chief economic advisor, was the chief economist at the World Bank, um, uh, in which it said, I think the economic logic behind dumping a load of toxic waste in the lowest wage country is impeccable, and we should face up to that. I've always thought that underpopulated countries in Africa are vastly underpolluted. He said he was being sarcastic. Uh, <laughs> 
Um, actually, um, the more uh, formal official uh, concern with this UN habitat has also confirmed uh, in various reports that this has been dumped in Somalia. Um, the special representative of the Secretary General, uh, Walad Abdallah, who is now um, uh, working with the Somali uh, authorities uh, has also, I think, uh, made a statement to that effect. So it is very well known. Uh, it's not something hidden. It's not something we are making up. Uh, the world knows, but it doesn't do anything about it. Mohamed Abshir Waldo, thank you for joining us, a consultant in Kenya, speaking to us from Mombasa. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We'll be back in a minute. That does it for our program, Democracy Now!, I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.